Hello students. Uh, today we will start completely a new area and uh, discussion will be on the very important activity in the receiver which is called uh, synchronization and uh, related to the spectrum communication system synchronization plays a very major and a crucial role in the receiver design. Uh, synchronization means uh, mainly on the alignment of the locally generated PN code with the code uh, that is getting um, superimposed and transmitted from the transmitter. Synchronization also involves the carrier synchronization. So, please remember for conventional communication system when we talk about synchronization that talks about either the time synchronization or the frequency synchronization or uh, the phase also the phase synchronization, but in the spectrum communication system the term synchronization is related to two different uh, related to two different aspect one is the code synchronization another is uh, carrier synchronization. In conventional communication system the synchronization is only related to the carrier synchronization. And in spread spectrum communication system, the synchronization consists of code synchronization as well as carrier synchronization. In uh, when we are talking about the synchronization, we are more uh, interested to learn first about the code synchronization process, which is fundamentally the alignment of the locally generated PN sequence code to the code that is transmitted and it is superimposed and transmitted uh, from the transmitter superimposed on the actual data and transmitted from the transmitter. Uh, remember this uh, code uh, synchronization is having two major part, one is the code acquisition and another is code tracking. Today code acquisition is the very first part of the code synchronization, today we will learn how code acquisition is uh, done inside a direct sequence receiver. The, today uh, the topic will be the understanding the fundamentals of this code acquisition mechanism in the direct sequence receiver. As uh, discussed earlier that code acquisition, code synchronization as well as the code uh, acquisition is a very critical uh, block that we is, uh, that is residing inside the receiver and it is a very important um, signal processing ball block inside the baseband receiver that needs to be devised and is to be designed critically. And uh, by uh, means of synchronization and the code acquisition, uh, we are actually um, uh, defining uh, the generating uh, code acquisition is having basically um, generating by is accomplished generating by the local replica of the PN code inside the receiver first of all and then multiplying it with the incoming signal which consists to the PN code transmitted by the transmitter and uh, after this multiplication uh, uh, when this multiplication is going on remember that uh, you have to synchronize the locally generated PN code with the incoming signal code and um, then actually the desired dispreading process can be uh, can take place. So, the synchronization the term which I already told that local it is not only just multiplying the incoming signal with the locally generated PN code you have to multiply with the synchronized PN code locally generated synchronized PN code with the incoming signal to make the dispreading process faithfully and uh, hence this synchronization will have two main parts one is the PN code acquisition as well as and second part is the PN tracking. Today we will enter into PN acquisition and uh, if you look into the PN acquisition, uh, then we will see the whole synchronization process as a two part mainly. One is actually the coarse uh, synchronization, another is the fast uh, another is the fine synchronization. In the coarse synchronization, the first task is to uh, there are two PN signals right now in our hand, you know, right. One is uh, the incoming signal which is coming uh, say the RT. Another is our locally generated PN sequence. So, um, uh, we are trying to synchronize the PN code inside the RT and the PN code that is locally generated. 
So, in that process of this synchronization or this alignment, it is not possible that at the first round you can synchronize both of them 100 percent perfect fashion or with a very minimal error. So, we do it in two steps. The first step that we do is called the course uh, synchronization and this course synchronization means that you are trying to align this uh, both of this PN code within a small fraction of a chip duration. So, at least within the chip duration we try to align them and if possible you try to align them within at least a half of the half of the chip duration. So, that means uh, actually the remaining residual error should be less than equal to the chip duration T c or uh, always should be the less than equal to T c. So, if the uh, it depends upon the complexity and the algorithm you are designing for the code synchronization in the course alignment process during course alignment process based on which actually it will be uh, defining whether you will be within actually with you are synchronizing within exactly with a residual offset of T c period or within uh, some of it I mean some part of it. So, you could synchronize within half of the T c period one fourth of T c period or actually you are left with a residual error of full T c period what exactly you are living with. So, error can be something like this suppose uh, this is the incoming R T signal and this is the received P n chip suppose we are doing and uh, uh, what is the target let us do once more suppose this is the incoming signal and um, suppose this is the receiving signal locally generated P n sequence. So, this is the incoming P n code and this is a locally generated P n code and what I mean to say by the synchronization and the offset is actually this um, of aligning this uh, locally generated uh, uh, P n code with that of the incoming P n code. So, this look at this picture the offset may be of multiple of the chip duration plus actually some fraction of the chip duration also. It depends actually on the course alignment process at least we try to correct the uh, multiple of the chip duration and within a chip also we try to correct at least up to some level. But uh, you know, whatever the residual error we are left with, then we will try to acquire it by a continuous uh, observation process which we call it is a PN acquisition or it is called the uh, sorry tracking. So, course estimation when we are trying to align both the codes within the multiple of the chip duration and within a fraction of the chip duration also. I mean it should be a uh, in times of T c plus actually some part of within T c at least a half part of the T c period. Uh, then we call it is a course uh, estimation and uh, course synchronization going on and also we call it a P n acquisition going on it is a course alignment we have done. And uh, once the course alignment is achieved the course aligned signal is uh, fed to a, another circuit where actually the continuous um, tracking of this estimated phase offsets are going on and uh, continuously there is a trial and uh, continuously there is a trial going on to realign the remaining offsets or to mitigate the minimal remaining offsets within the chip period. And we call it a P n tracking and it actually remember this P n tracking always actually is having a closed loop operation which tries to uh, maintain the waveform um, locally generated waveform to be best possible aligned with the received signal. So, any changes in the in the received signal that happens because of the Doppler effect or because of the change of the delay spread inside the channel and uh, because of other issues that are coming from the wireless channel and change of the speed of the velocity uh, change of the velocity of the vehicle also. So, from all that actually whatever the course alignment you are doing it may be sufficient, but the residual error portion may keep on changing and you are by continuously observing and uh, assessing measuring this um, remaining offsets within the chip and trying to correct it and when the locally generated waveform is uh, going on local waveform is getting generated to correct the phase of that and trying to best possible way to align it with the incoming signal is called the tracking. 
So, we understand now that uh, the synchronization means the combined effect of this acquisition class tracking which is a course plus fine and you have to do the course alignment first and then you enter into the fine alignment track. So, let us enter into the available uh, literature going through that available literature what are the different procedure that people follow. Uh, remember this, uh, if you try to follow the all structure of this PN acquisition systems, you will find that usually the different methods whatever is proposed, they consider a common type of the system model. This acquisition technique will consist of basically first a multiplier, where actually you will uh, take the two different signals, one is locally generated, another is uh, incoming and output of this multiplier or basically this multiplier is uh, nothing but a uh, correlation going on between the two and we try to see actually the difference of the correlation and then we it is followed uh, by a detector circuit and output of the detector circuit is fed to a decision device or some strategy um, device which actually this detector uh, followed by a detector and the strategy decision detection and detector and decision can be combined also in some cases and uh, this correlation measure based on this correlation measure and based on some decision rule based on most probably in most of the cases based on some threshold set decision rule, we try to find out actually how big this correlation difference is there in between these two signal, whether it is good or too high or uh, too low and what to do next with this difference value of the correlation. And um, uh, hence the strategy comes into the picture that uh, what to do, how to devise the algorithm based on this. Uh, on this uh, on this decision output and uh, difference of the schemes in the acquisition uh, model we will see the difference is coming uh, due to the design of this detector one due to the change of this detector architecture the way you are uh, choosing this uh, detector that is actually devising the different kind of the pn acquisition model and uh, also the search mechanism based on which the decision is going on. So, that search mechanism is also playing a very important role to um, vary from the one code acquisition mechanism to the next code acquisition mechanism. So, we will first look based on the detector uh, how the classification came in the PN acquisition systems. Uh, the classification will be mostly based on the coherent detection is going on or a non coherent detection going on. For direct sequence phase spectrum systems, we pick for prefer to go ahead with a non coherent detector. Remember why? Uh, because uh, we assume that um, carrier, I, I told that code synchronization and carrier synchronization are two different process that combinedly consist the synchronization in the space spectrum communication system. While we are do dealing with the code acquisition and the code synchronization, we assume that the carrier synchronization is not done. It uh, we that that's why we don't know actually. We don't have any information about the phase of the carrier frequency, and hence it is preferable once you don't know anything about the carrier phase and frequency, and then hence it is preferable to go ahead with the non-coherent kind of the detectors. But uh, whatever, uh, however, some of the um, uh, code acquisition system models are there and the mechanisms are there where actually they which can estimate a priori either they have the a priori knowledge or which can estimate also the you know, phase values or the estimate the phase of the carrier frequencies. And in such a situation uh, also actually the coherent type of there the coherent type of the detectors can are uh, applied. So, we will prefer uh, to go ahead with the non coherent detectors and inside the non coherent detector we will find that the basically the architecture would look like this. The incoming signal will be uh, entering into after some band pass filter. After some band pass filter, you will see that uh, he is entering into a square law detector, and the square law detector output is entering into a integrate and dump uh, circuit. It is integrate and uh, dump circuit and output of this integrate and dump circuit will be entering into a, a simple uh, threshold detector where 
and remember output of the integrate and dump circuit there will be a sampler and it actually it is coming to the threshold and uh, uh, the threshold detector. And uh, this is the combined architecture the way the non coherent type of the detector work. And uh, uh, instead of uh, this band pass filter if I am coming to the coherent detectors uh, you will get a low pass uh, filter and the which is may basically may be constituted of integrate and dump circuit also. And then a uh, very simple either base uh, detector or some threshold detector will be there in the path for the uh, detection process. Uh, this portion we have already discussed why we are preferring the non coherent detector, uh, which is mostly common uh, com coming actually into the pac practice. But as I have already told that uh, some of the advanced uh, acquisition system uh, they may be capable of intelligent enough to estimate the carrier phase frequency shifts that are coming up uh, dynamically actually that are changing because of the propagation delay as well as the Doppler and they are capable to estimate that and in such situation we prefer to go ahead with the coherent detector. Next slide we will see actually the coherent detectors and we I told that in the case of coherent detector you will have it will be employed simply by a low pass filter and this low pass filter you can implement uh, by uh, integrate and dump circuit and output will be a simple detector like your optimum base detector or you apply a simple threshold detector also sometimes and here is the decision device at the output. So, first classification that we have learned now based on the detector architecture and uh, the detector architecture may be of coherent or non-coherent. So, based on that actually one classification of the PN code acquisition uh, circuits are coming up. The second classification, second classification can come based on the integration time that you are using inside the detector, detector and uh, integration time that you are using inside the detection and uh, decision process. And that integration can be of over the either uh, fixed integration time you are involving with or you can have a variable integration time involved in the process. Fixed integration time can be further having two different types either it is a single dual time or it is a multiple dual time. So, this integration time we call here the dual and uh, this is basically the time duration that is involved and if we see that uh, the time duration over which the integration is running is one time then we call it a single dual time and multiple such uh, integration and taking the decision over the multiple such integration process is involved in the multiple dual time. So, the fixed integration time detectors where the integration time is fixed over which the integration and dump circuit is working that integration interval is fixed, but it may be a single time integration or it may be the multiple time the stuff is going on based on that it is a single or multiple dual time uh, detectors. And uh, see this uh, single dual time when actually we are using it further actually this single dual time detectors can use can it can be further classified based on the fact that uh, whether you are using the full period of the code, full period of the code means full time period of the code for the correlation or you are using a part of that uh, time period of the code for the correlation and taking decision based on the partial observation of the uh, code duration. And based on that uh, it is either full period code correlation you are taking or you are taking a partial code correlation and hence the single dual time also can be classified further. And see multiple dual detectors uh, they will be varying from one to another based on the fact that how you are relying on the how you are varying the further decision over the second and the third dual times based on the observation of the first dual time. So, anyway the multiple dual detectors are taking the decisions and complete observation and decision strategy over the single dual time and based on that observation they are taking the devising the algorithm how to behave how much extra information needs to be extract extracted from the from the second or third or fourth dual times. You may actually imply some kind of the logic of averaging actually all the 
observations over the multiple dwell times and give the same weightage on the decision process independently that is going on on each and every dwell time or you can actually devise some algorithm thinking that if the single dwell time output is really very nice then the second or third real outputs will just be utilized one or more two more will be simply uh, utilized over the partial code time maybe it can be something like this in the single dwell time you can run the correlation over the whole period of the code acquisition and taking a decision and that if uh, the you can detect actually the phase very nicely then in the second dwell time you can uh, reduce the length of the correlation period hence that is a multiple dwell going on but the period of the correlation is not same compared to the single and the multiple and that decision is based on the observation of the first dwell time whatever the estimation on the phase you are uh, you are getting and uh, so the multiple dwell detectors can have the several kind of the logics on how you are using the estimation of uh, the other dwell times rather than um, the other dwell times except the single one or the first one and um, the detector structures uh, make some uh, decision that interest their interest actually may be weighted over the multiple dwell uh, multiple dwell uh, observations and uh, if the threshold basically uh, as i told that they are estimating the phase and they are trying to see whether that value is crossing some threshold or not and based on that the decision is locked whether synchronization has achieved or you, you have not synchronized the decision is locked and uh, so this there is a call, there is a um, uh, algorithm running actually at the output of your detector and the decision device inside the decision device at the output of the detector which is a verification algorithm basically that verification algorithm the detector is measuring right the correlation uh, difference between these two and then the output of the detector is getting measured with a threshold value predefined threshold value and decision device is saying that over multiple dwell interval how many times actually you are crossing that threshold so decision device this verification algorithm says that we did we will take the decision based on the single observation if it is a single dwell system or you will take the further decision whether the synchronization will be declared to be achieved by observing the multiple um, observation multiple observation over the multiple dwell time and running the verification algorithm basically over the multiple dwell time one may run actually verification algorithm in such a way that there is a search going on right that how many times the um, difference has crossed the threshold value or it is below the threshold value and once actually this search is going on back to lock so search and lock that two simultaneous process is involved when the verification algorithm is going on so you search and you then lock the desired device the logic based on which uh, the locking will be there to declare that hence the synchronization is achieved um this uh, verification algorithm uh, whatever is existing in practice uh, as i told it are have they are having multiple uh, way or approach to declare the synchronization one is the search and uh, lock strategy that just now i have uh, explained that uh, which uh, takes that decision that it is locked if the majority of the times uh, the difference uh, is crossing that uh, threshold level and uh, multiple dwell acquisition system they locked actually either seeing that uh, any one of if any one of the dwell time in any one of the dwell time it output fails to cross the limit he will declare that synchronization is not achieved so it depends actually upon the criteria that you are setting how how actually well how fine you are in the in the achieving the synchronization you are you designing a system which uh, which requires 100% or 99.99% say um, uh, code acquisition that much perfection is required for the design or uh, you are designing a system where actually the synchronization of say around 90 to 95 2% is okay to go ahead with so 90 to 92% kind of stuff can be achieved by the search to lock strategy if you are really worried about the 99.9999% of acquisition in such kind some kind of the system design 
then you have to actually be very strict on this kind of the multiple dual acquisition systems kind of. And finally, for all this different kind of the category of the variable integration time detectors, um, it is reserved for those cases where actually the dual time can be uh, uh, continuously be varying. For variable integration time detectors, you can actually vary the integration time of the integrate and dump receiver on the fly and hence it is a stochastic process and uh, the choice of this integration time itself is a stochastic process and hence the the, the whole decision the how many times the decision is the correlation difference is crossing the threshold that is also a random variable. So, completely a very good example of this variable integration time detector is uh, uh, that is used in the radar uh, signal processing and uh, that is a very nice very good example of this is sequential classical sequential detectors. And uh, next classification of the detector from here onwards uh, depending upon the how fast you are uh, acquiring the code acquisition and uh, that means actually how fast your detectors are running the rate of the decision is the important part to know. So, based on the rate achieved we get two different category one is the high decision rate detectors another is the low decision rate detector. Remember when we talk about the high decision rate detector they are the basically um, passive mass matched filter um, based uh, correlator architecture that we uh, find in practice and where the decision is made at the rate of the cheap rate. So, within a cheap duration the decision is done a huge uh, circuit um, uh, this kind of process uh, this kind of the detectors are hardware intense usually and they take the decision on the out of sync code phase offsets between the incoming and the local code generation at the uh, either at the cheap rate or it may be the integrate um, integer multiple of this cheap rate. And, um, Though they are fast enough, their accuracy uh, is under question. Uh, there is lost of a lot of possibility to get a higher rate of false alarm in such uh, detectors, and uh, hence actually it is also a hardware intense uh, circuit design. It will be. Whereas the low decision rate detectors, they also do the same thing, but at a very low space, and uh, then they are slower than the code chip rate. Definitely, that is slower than the code chip rate. And uh, as such uh, many of these structures of this low decision rate detectors who are the active correlator based uh, architecture will be involved here and this low decision rate detectors uh, they are not also the hardware intense. Remember this low decision rate detectors are also uh, give uh, will give you very high uh, performance in the detection level I mean uh, false alarm rate will be will less. And uh, to complete this whole uh, di discussion there is the last kind of the detector types which we category in terms of your in sync and the out of sync hypothesis. I mean there is a hit or there is no hit synchronization is achieved or synchronization is not achieved based on the principle of the Bayes theorem or name and person kind of uh, algorithms where the minimum probability of an error of the second kind missed detection. Uh, for a given probability of error of the first kind false alarm they are all involved. And uh, we will actually go in detail basically in the next module on the match filter based architecture uh, to check uh, also on the non coherent kind of the detectors. And uh, let us see uh, how does it work in the next module. And uh, now the time is to just uh, put a summary on all the kind of the acquisition systems and the detector designs that we have discussed. And here is a tree which will help you to understand the different kind of the PN acquisition system based on the detector architecture where the classification goes. We saw already that we have classically we can divide the detectors by coherent and non coherent detectors. Then based on the rate at which the detectors are performing the acquisition it can be a low decision rate as well as a high decision rate high are usually match filter based passive correlators and here the active correlators are involved. Then whether you are using a fixed dwell time or you are having a variable dwell time if you are having a fixed dwell time then whether you are using a single dwell time or a multiple dwell time and uh, further classifications are there over the multiple as well as a single dwell time because in the single dwell time we have seen we have the classification um, based on whether we are 
using the full period of the code correlation, we are using the full period of the code for correlation or we are not using it, we are partially using it. And multiple dwell times are also involved with the verification with the immediate rejection or verification is uh, with no immediate rejection is going on. And uh, another branch which is uh, based on the in sync or, um, or out of sync hypothesis based uh, detection process which involves a base name and person or some other kind of the detectors. Uh, so, this is the with this we would like to end here in this module. Uh, with the understanding of the fundamentals of the PN code acquisition mechanisms available in the literature for detailed study, one may, if you are interested, you may also search for some of the literature.